period. And so it is true that we have had an increase in new cases with mental conditions during this pandemic. And the gender of those new cases, how, how is it like? There are no differences. Women are equally coming in as, as much as men are coming in. But we, we are seeing more men coming in with substance misuse disorders um, and then more women coming in with anxiety disorders. But generally, uh, we cannot say it is two, it is to one. We are getting equal numbers in females and males. And then looking at the COVID, the social distancing and everything. How are you able to practice the social distancing, looking at how limited the space you have is? We have a peculiar challenge in our psychiatric unit because even prior to COVID, the space was woefully inadequate for us. A um, place to keep patients for inpatient care, those who have to be admitted. We have only 11 beds, uh, five for males, six for females. And then even the OPD area where patients will come and wait to be seen by the doctor is also a woefully small space. In addition to that, consulting rooms for doctors to even consult has been a challenge even prior to COVID. So now that COVID is here and social distancing is mandatory to keep the infection away from us, it has even worsened our space challenges. We have patients sitting on verandas under trees. We have had doctors consulting in corridors. In fact, there's a particular consulting room that is so small that the doctor sits inside and the patient's chair has been placed outside the room in the glare of other people walking around. So there is no privacy. Uh, it has made our work really, really challenging. Vichy Spiogabra, TV3 News, Kumasi. Management of the Kumasi Rattery Park in the Ashanti region have lamented the negative impact of COVID-19 on patronage. The situation has affected some staff of one of the largest recreational centres in Ghana. William Evans Inkum has filed the following report. The impact of COVID-19 has been felt in every sphere of life. Now, this, or this is the major recreational centre in the Ashanti region, for that matter, the northern sector. As you can see, this is very unusual about the Rattray Park. On a normal day, if nothing at all, you will see people, I mean, seated and um, kind of feeling the, the, the breeze and the, the, the serene environment and all of that. But this is the current scene here at the Rattray Park. Let me speak to the director of this particular place for him to tell us how the COVID-19 has impacted or affected the running of this particular park and what has happened to the very workers who have been getting their daily bread from this very place. COVID-19 has negative effect on the economy and then we can grow out Rattray Park. Right now we have about 60 workers but now uh, only eight people are running here. The rest are home and then we are waiting for Maybe if the government will leave the band, then they will come back and they start work as soon as possible. So it is going to be a restrictive movement as far as this particular place is concerned. It's not going to be the usual, one will say, business where people, all manner of people will have the opportunity to enter. Sometimes you see this whole place flooded. But there's going to be some level of limitation and that will be the new Rattray Park. William Evans Inkum, TV3 News, Rattray Park, Kumasi. And government has taken steps to retool and upgrade the Methodist Technical Institute in Kumasi as part of efforts to adequately resource technical and vocational training institutes across the country. The move is to enhance uh, TVET education uh, to train the youth to be more responsive to emerging trends on the job market. Technical and vocational education training has been identified as a driving force towards accelerating economic growth. Government as part of plans to invest more resources in TVET institutions across the country has improved infrastructure at the Methodist Technical Institute. The institute is one of four educational institutions currently benefiting from the upgrading and retooling. Deputy Minister of Education in charge of TVETS, 
Gifty Chum Ampofo says the intervention is in fulfillment of government promise to enhance technical and vocational education in the country. The president stated at the beginning of his tenure that to reduce poverty and youth unemployment, the solution is TVET. And TVET is very expensive. And for that matter, we're not just using slogan as the TVET is the solution, but we're investing so much in TVET. She entreated parents to encourage their wards take up technical and vocational training. TVET is always a passion. It's not a matter of pushing somebody saying that because we can't do science, go and do TVET. TVET should always be a passion. So we're appealing to parents and teachers to encourage students and children who have the passion for TVET into TVET. Because now we're changing the face of TVET. We're an era where we need students who have positioned themselves well to do TVET, which is globally competitive. Principal of the Institute, Yao Chumesi, is optimistic the upgrade will enable students to acquire the requisite skills to be globally competitive. These are modernized ma machinery. And so when they work with these ma ma modernized machinery, they will come out much more prepared and fit into the um, economy, modern economy. School authorities say all the modern training equipment are all in awaiting for fixing by the contractors. The upgrading was done with some financial assistance from VASE System Technique in Austria. Ghana stands a great chance of maximizing opportunities in apple production following the successful cultivation of some fruits in parts of the country. Scientists at the Crop Research Institute of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research are confident of a successful mass production. Ibrahim Abubakar has been speaking to Professor Bilab Mensah Jomeku, a horticulturist and principal research scientist at CRI. After the Riamwasi approved Bruhaha, some areas, including Etimetin Tabum, here in the Ashanti region, have reported the growth of apple tree. Scientists say the apple can be grown in temperate like weather conditions in the country, including areas like Abetipi and Ebre. I have some of the scientists here with me who have visited both Riamwasi and Etimetim to assess the fruit and find out whether it's indeed apple or not. Let's speak to the principal research scientist and find out from him what their findings are and what prospects the country can gain from the production of apple. With our weather pattern, is it likely we can grow apple in the country? This is very possible in Ghana. There are certain parts of the country, for example, Ibri, Kuao Mount is a BTV area and I'm a Jope in the Volta region. They have a temperate like climatic conditions during the dry season. As such, apples can grow there. Other tropical areas can also grow apples because in Israel and India, tropical apples have been developed, which we can use in Ghana. As it stands now, have we grow any of the apple tree? in the country? The only one we've identified currently is the one at uh, Etimetim Taboom, which we identified on Tuesday. And the owner said he was carrying out an experiment and he brought the plants from Belgium. And having studied the plant, it's likely we can grow. What is the difference between the one at Taboom and the one at Riamwasi? Because I know you went to both communities to assess the fruit. When we went to Uyamwasi, we have an app which we can use to identify the, the tree. We observed that the plant at Uyamwasi is a fig tree, not apple. And though that fig is edible, we need to look at it whether the one there can be edible in Ghana because the insect that pollinates lays egg in it and that egg will hatch whilst the fruit is developing. Hence, 
will destroy the fruit at maturity. But the one we saw at Taboom is real apple. Fig tree has a lot of seeds in the fruit. Once apple has a single seed in the middle of the fruit. So there is a vast difference between the two. We have just initiated what we brought from uh, Taboom. We have planted the, the twigs that we brought. We are monitoring them and we are hoping that as they come up, we will do cuttings and also use tissue culture to propagate, to multiply them using the bath. That was Professor Beloved Mensa Jomoku, a principal research scientist here at Crop Research. He has confirmed that the one they found at Etimetim Tabum is a real apple and that it is time government invests in the production of apple in the country. Ibrahim Abubakar, TV3, Kumasi. Thanks, Ibrahim, for that. And uh, let's move on. The coronavirus pandemic has affected every sphere of public life in the build-up to the uh, NPP. Well, this is still midday live, and uh, in the build-up to the NPP primary, some aspirants have been narrating how they have to review their budget to meet challenges uh, in the current situation. Here is a report by William Evans Inkum. The game of politics has changed. For some of the new entrants in the NPP primaries, they will have to up their budget in order to stay in the competition. This is as a result of the COVID-19. I, for instance, I have to um, distribute hand sanitizers periodically to the delegates in all the communities. But apart from that, I also targeted the, um, um, the markets and some of the hospitals in the constituency and provide um, some of these things, nose masks, um, hand sanitizers and all that. So that also adds up to the cost. At the same time, during the lockdown, a lot of them were not going to work and you have some of these people engaged in petty trading. So they make daily wages or some small amounts of money um, daily. So if on any day they don't go to work, then the household is um, going to have financial difficulties. So what I have, I, I did was to distribute um, food items. To so them. you cannot just tell the delegates, you meet them and tell them that wear a, a nose mask, use a sanitizer and all this, we have to surprise them. So that one became a, a budget which was earlier on not planned for. So Come to campaigning, it's becoming a little bit difficult. It's not easy at all. So the strategy maybe is to meet dele delegates one-on-one -on -one. and looking at the vast nature of Nsuta Kwama and Beposo constituency, it has not been easy. But we are using all other strategies to get in touch with the delegates. Social media has become one of the effective communication tools for reaching delegates. Um, you have a lot of um, WhatsApp platforms um, for the delegates. So that becomes an opportunity for you to interact. And so my campaign team has been um, pushing a lot of information about my achievements. My, you get a lot of um, the delegates who dissect and analyze the information and ask critical questions. The social media tool it has become useful, but in all, you still have to pay. And it, you have to pay for them too sometimes because these things are not free. William Evans Inkum, TV3 News, Kumasi. And a parliamentary candidate for the new patriotic party in the Kwesi Mintim constituency of the Western region, Dr. Prince Ama, has provided a life insurance policy for all 401 delegates, their spouses and children. The insurance policy is to give the delegates cover in the event of an accident during party activities, including rallies and campaigns. Now, my colleague Eric Yao Eje joins me live from Kwesi Mintim with Dr. Prince Ama uh, for this particular uh, story. Now, there are many gestures that are being bandied about to help um, persons who are going to vote in the 2020 elections. But before that, the New Patriotic Party has its parliamentary premise. Now, 
before they go to that polls, um, a lot of things are happening. A parliamentary aspirant for this constituency, Christmitin constituency, is extending a gesture to the delegates here. What he is doing is that he is providing insurance cover for all these persons. Now, you may know him as the executive secretary for NACA, Dr. Prince Ama, and I want him to throw more light on this gesture. Good afternoon. Welcome to Media Live on TV3. Good afternoon, Eric. Uh, so essentially, what are you trying to seek with this? Well, um, you see, delegates and party people, uh, the work that they do, you know, is associated with a lot of risk. Um, there are issues relating to political violence. There are issues relating to um, health in their own health and welfare in relation to the work that they do. So. Uh, what I have done is to collaborate with um, insurance agency, Enterprise Insurance, to provide insurance cover for them to mitigate some of the risk associated with um, their services to the party as party officers. But beyond even party work, their own daily life, remember that they are part of a group. Um, the political parties also uh, social groupings. And so if they are members of a group and they have issues, um, it is the same party leaders and people connected uh, to the party who will come to their aid. And so providing this is to more or less mitigate the potential risk um, associated with their daily lives and associated with the work that they do uh, for the party. Is it uh, in any way informed of what happened with regards to what uh, during the Let My Vote Count campaign? We know that there are examples here where somebody climbed a pole to uh, hoist a flag and the person fell and he, the health was left on his own to cater for himself. As, I mean, exactly. There's, as I said, there's so many things that um, come the way uh, of a party person, somebody working for the party, particularly polling station executives who are actually the foundation um, of the party. As, as I said, it can be party activity on, the, on duty as party people working for the party, uh, they can be involved in unfortunate circumstances or event. Um, there's a voter registration exercise coming. There's election coming. There are some you can identify potential risk in, in engaging that activity. Beyond that, in their daily lives, they travel around. They they are engaged in businesses, but they are also part of a, a group, which is the MPP. So if they find themselves in any of such unfortunate circumstances. If they fall sick, they are involved in critical illness, example, they would want to see what kind of support the party will give to them. And I want to mitigate this risk um, by, by providing that insurance cover so that in case that they, uh, they are involved in any accident or critical illness or any life-related uh, issues, they, they could fall on the insurance cover. The cover actually um, covers the delegates, um, their spouse, it covers their children, at least uh, at least three children. Are you doing well. this because you are seeking their mandate? But I have done several things, um, supported this party and the polling station executive for years. And this is also part of the contributions that I want to, con to, to provide. Uh, myself, I have worked at polling station level worked at constituency level, worked at regional and regional level, uh, worked at every level, most uh, all levels of the party, essentially. And there are things, these are some of the things that when I was working at polling station level, I wish that I had, and I want to offer that opportunity to them. Um, it is part of my commitment to supporting uh, party people. Of course, I'm contesting an election, um, and uh, this should also be a demonstration of my innovative, you know, thinking and capacity to help party people to survive some of the challenges that are associated with their work and motivate them to work hard for the party. Okay. Um, lastly, before we go, and um, this in recent uh, times we've had talks of comp whether to compile a new register or, or not. Um, from your personal assessment and judging from the discussions that have been going so far, where will you stand? 
Well, I think that my position on the compilation of a new register is a matter of public knowledge. I, if you recall, um, some a month ago, I, I authored a paper that, you know, in, uh, electoral commission found my argument so strong to the extent of posting it on their website that created controversy. There's no doubt that we need a new register. The integrity of the register has been compromised and you have senior officials of the electoral commission, they themselves providing evidence of um, tempering with the register and uh, insertion of new data and uh, you know, the integrity of the register itself uh, is, is in doubt. And I think that um, given the circumstances, uh, if the electoral commission which has the constitutional mandate to compile a new register has provided us enough reasons uh, coupled with what we or ourselves have come to appreciate there's no doubt that a new register is is needed at, at, at this particular time and, and for the 2020 elections okay thank you very much uh, dr pinsama so that was dr pinsama i'm a, a parliamentary aspirant for Question to me, uh, giving us an insight into where he stands with regards to the compilation of a new voters register and the gesture he is extending to delegates of his constituency. Eric, your date with question team. Well, this is your election command center. Stay with us. More news coming up after this break.